Hey, how's it going? So, this is my first cup of coffee of the day. The only reason the blind is closed is because of the sunlight. I broke my whistling teapot. I dropped it and it just popped out. I've got to figure out how to put it back in. So, I did wind up cutting up the pumpkin last night before the husband got home. This is, oh, heavy, that pumpkin. So I cut it up and you cut it in petals, which is why you saw me put the knife in the top and go down. We're all programmed to cut the circle and then scoop out all the guts. You don't have to do that when you're prepping it to cook. You cut it down and you cut it down and you cut it down and you cut it in petals. In petals, okay? because this would be the bottom and that would be the top. When cleaning out the seeds, it peels like a banana down. It doesn't peel going up, but down, all those seeds just scloop, come right out. And we're programmed to get in there and scrape and it's so much more work. Anyway, then I throw it in the oven for about 20 minutes on 375. So it's not cooked cooked, but it's cooked enough. I need a spoon. I'm so tired. Like I said, that's my first cup of coffee of the day, but I figured I'm going to sit here and process these, so I might as well talk to you, you know? Hey. Ah. I don't want the spoon. I want a knife. Wrong knife. Okay. So now I just have to take the peel off. Peeling when it's raw is really annoying. Whoa, way up here. When it's raw is really annoying, but peeling when it's cooked is only slightly annoying. And this is where I start five different things. I had a peeler. Yeah, there's a potato peeler over there somewhere, but it's probably in the bottom of the sink and I don't feel like washing it. Oh, wait a second. There's a potato peeler. So, can you see that once it's cooked, it peels like that? I mean, that easy. Okay, so I'm just going to sit here peeling. And being disjointed. So the hubby posted a photo on Facebook of a sign on the trail that said three miles and the tree branch was in such a way that it looks like it says three milfs. Which has resulted in some juvenile conversation. Ha ha ha. And one of our friends who's a... Well, he's not that burly. He's a bigger dude. Anyway, he made a comment that... Not only are there MILFs, but there's probably cougars. Oh no, you might need a bear to protect you. You might need a bear to protect you. Uh, Urban Dictionary is your friend? Seriously? When you're not in the LBGTQIA Wahoosits community, you use words you don't know the meaning of? Don't know if he watches my YouTube channel or not, but you know, hey, Courtney, if you watch my YouTube channel, a bear is a big bearded gay guy. Yeah. So if you're talking about MILFs and cougars in a sexual content, you're talking about bears in a sexual content. We know a couple of bears. I messaged the hubby. I was like, do you want me to tell him what that means? And the hubby's like, nah, but I might tag somebody who's we know who's a bear. I was like, yeah, that was funny. I laughed myself sick, and I hadn't had coffee yet, so it was kind of, look, it just peels. I, I can't get the camera. So I never was good at curling my hair because I can't do the angle translation because of the dyslexia. So the camera angle baffles me. It just peels right off. If you cook it just a little bit longer until it's really mush, then it just comes right off. But I didn't want it cooked that mushy. Now you can see the dark color to the light color. I'm not trimming all that dark color off because some people will tell you to trim all the color and trim to the white. But that's where the nutrition is. It's where a slightly off flavor is, but it's where the nutrition is. And this is easier to do broken half. It really is. Anyway. I didn't have much of a subject for today because I just had the thought that I should talk while I'm doing this. Um, 
So if you haven't noticed in a couple of videos, the cupboard doors on the bottom down here are open and all cha chaotic and everything. I was actually doing that on purpose to pick on somebody who complained that my cupboard doors were giving them anxiety. Because I'm, I'm capable of being that silly or petty. You choose the verb, I don't care. I'm OCD and stuff like that gets to me and their comment was I can't believe your cupboard doors were open you have OCD that must drive you nuts why would you do that I was like I'll make sure to do it again thank you so one of the things okay here's something for you to realize Girls, women, ladies, feminine beings, people who wear clothing from the feminine side of the store. Your dress shoe size is not your boot size. Okay? I don't care what size you wear in a dress shoe. You wear a bigger size in a hiking boot because you don't wear heavy socks with a hiking boot. Chances are your running shoe size is a larger size than your dress shoe. This is something a lot of people don't get. In a dress shoe, in a woman's marketed dress shoe, I wear a size 11. I wear a size 11 because they don't sell size 12s. So I fit my poor feet into a shoe that's too small and deal with it. Because I got big feet. I got really big feet. For a while, there was a, sh a drag queen shop in Seattle that I could buy Hamburger Mary's. God, that was a long time ago. That I could get shoes in my size. If I wanted to shop online, I could probably find shoes in my size, dress shoes. But my feet are so funky to begin with, I really have to try things on or they hurt and they blister. Well, they're going to blister regardless. Anyway, in boots, I wear about an 11, men, or 11 men's. Okay, I wear a nine and a half men's in cute little boatsman's and an 11 men's in boots because I want to be able to put socks on. Simple as that. Maybe a 10 and a half. I wear whatever fits, and you can't be limited to sizing based on, or to, to your shoe based on the size. Oh, I wear this size, so I can't try. Try either side. Anyway, that's your, your trivia for the day. So, when they talk about these being too watery, this came out of the oven last night, partially cooked, and the husband's like, I don't want one, I'm eating one. Okay? People claim they don't make good cooking pumpkins, and it's wrong. The jack-o'-lantern pumpkin sold in the grocery stores at Halloween has a better smell and a better flavor, in my opinion, than the sweet, sweet pumpkin, the pie pumpkin, those little ones that they sell. Okay? These are the ones I peeled before I baked it. I peeled two of them and then decided I didn't have the grip strength for peeling raw, because peeling raw is really, really hard. So then I threw them in the oven, baked them briefly. They're not, like I said, they're not completely baked. Another thing you can make with jack lantern pumpkins is pumpkin flour. If you're of the whole foods category that makes vegetable flours, you can make pumpkin flour out of this and then put it into breads and stuff like that and have pumpkin flavor. And put it into your coffee and have pumpkin flavored coffee, not pumpkin pie flavored coffee. I remember when pie spice first started being a thing, somebody was like, hey, you want to go get coffee? They have that pumpkin pie spice. And I was like, sure, I love pumpkin. And I got my cup of coffee and I'm like, this isn't pumpkin. This is like cinnamon and some nutmeg. Yeah, it's pumpkin pie spice. That's not pumpkin. That's just pie. That's just cinnamon. Why don't you just call it cinnamon spice? Anyway. Yeah, I'm old. So yeah, you can make flour. You can dehydrate this. 
Um, maybe not bake it to peel it. Maybe you can use the peeler and peel off beef jerky strips and then dehydrate those. I've done that. The thing with cooking from scratch and cooking whole foods is the sheer amount of little things that you need to make it work. I can't take a drink of my coffee because my hands are gross. The sheer amount of little things that you need to make it work. And starting again, it's kind of overwhelming because I used to have all this because the pumpkin flour will last three to five years, which means you only have to make it once every couple of years. But now that I'm out of everything, I don't have any of it. So one step at a time, I'll get there. There was a post on my Facebook memories yesterday about from 2010 about made kimchi, was going to bake some bread, did some frosting for some... I just ran down this list of things I did that day. And it was a whole bunch of stuff. I couldn't do that right now. Physically could not do that level of energy right now. It kind of amazed me how, how that worked. There was also a post, I found it interesting that they were both on the same day, different years, from 2016 talking about, 2017, whatever, talking about how it's been a year since the celiac's diagnosis and my arthritis is so much better, it's amazing, I'm, I'm really, really happy, but I've fallen five times in the last two weeks because I'm having joint problems and allergy problems and this and that and the other thing. Well, what happened with the celiac's is going off of gluten, I have that ag aggravated immune system to begin with, not just because of the celiacs. And going off of gluten, the immune system started looking for other things to attack because it didn't have my gut to attack. It didn't have an identifiable allergen, so it started looking for new allergens. And I have progressive allergies, which means my body will just invent things to be allergic to. So, I fell six times in a week and, and thought enough about it to mark comment on Facebook. We now know that's the MS, okay? That I was starting an MS flare right about then. So that's interesting. I, I really don't like Facebook for 99 things. I really like Facebook for this day in history, okay? And I wish that I had the focus and dedication to just keep a diary because that would that's what I'm using Facebook for you know you look and see what you did that day so there's that I'm kind of disappointed with Facebook pages that I don't get a this day in history on my pages because I did a lot of writing originally on pages and groups and they don't show up in the this day in history so that kind of is a, a annoying thing. I'm almost halfway done. See? Just keep peeling. Anyway, so a couple years ago I commented about being gluten-free, meant the arthritis was better, the back pain, which is killing me right now, was better, but I'd fallen a couple, six times. And I talked to the husband when he got home about that. I was like, hey, check this out. And I read him the, the post. And he's like, oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah, that was the start. And he's like, yeah, it was. That was absolutely the first start, which is why when you have chronic health problems, you really have to keep track of things. I have a list of things. Lorianne had commented on a video a while back of things she wanted me to discuss. And one was how... With chronic health problems, when you have one chronic health illness, you have more than one. And we'll just segue right into that. Ellers Danlos uses the zebra as its mascot. This comes from the old medical phase. When you hear hoof beats, think horses, not zebras. Think common, not uncommon. 
which is a problem when you have a zebra disorder because they don't even think to look for it. They have to rule out 27 other things before they'll look for what it is. And it's why people with Ehlers-Danlos don't get diagnosed until they're adults a lot of times because they had to rule out 27 other things and then you switch doctors and the new doctor has to rule out 27 other things because they won't take the first doctor's point of view. Okay? But there's this thing with these diseases and it's called being comorbid. Morbid being death. They run together. Zebras run in packs. If you have one zebra illness, celiacs, Ehlers-Danlos, arthritis, if you have one, chances are you have three, if not five. And then your friends make catty little crappy ass comments about, well, I thought it was this other thing. Well, yeah, it is that other thing too. Okay. If you have rheumatoid arthritis, that means you have an aggravated immune system. Your immune system is attacking your body. That's what causes rheumatoid arthritis, which means you also have bad asthma, asthma and allergies. If you have rheumatoid arthritis, there's a good chance you have Crohn's or IBS or, or colitis of some form or gastroparesis because it was untreated. If you have Ehlers-Danlos, there's a really, really good chance that before too long you will have Crohn's, IBS, or gastroparesis. Gastroparesis is just when your gut dies. That's what I have on the gut. My gut is just, it doesn't digest. Um... You could say that's just a symptom of the Ehlers-Danlos. You can, or the arthritis, or, or, or. But medically speaking, they are separate entities. They just happen to come together. Celiacs and rheumatoid arthritis go together. Okay, if you have one, chances are you have the other. If you have a celiacs, you have a much higher chance of having EDS, Ehlers-Danlos. Okay. That's just how these things work. It turns out that if you have Ehlers-Danlos, you have a higher chance of having MS. If you have celiacs, you have a higher chance of having MS. So the fact that I have MS, Ehlers-Danlos, celiacs, and rheumatoid arthritis is not surprising to a doctor. They run together. What would be surprising is only having one. If you only have one of those, the doctor will think it's a bad diagnosis and start looking for other things because only having one is uncommon. Having a cluster is common. It's the same with mental health. Okay, in mental health, you don't have somebody who has histrionic personality disorder, attention deficit disorder, and, or you do have, histrionic disorder, Attention deficit disorder and an inability to, I can't remember what that one's called because my brain is fuzzy. Um, defiance, when, when you don't get along with people, with authority. They go together. And if you have somebody who says, I have histrionic personality disorder, that's all I have, then either they're not getting served well by their doctor by their shrink, or they don't have that. If somebody says, I have bipolar, and you say, oh, how's your depression? Oh, I'm never depressed. How do you have bipolar if you're never depressed? You can be a unipolar manic. You can be a unipolar depressive. That's unipolar depressive, unipolar manic. That is not bipolar. Bipolar means going from depressed to manic to depressed to manic. Or from normal to depressed to really depressed to normal to depressed to really depressed. Or from normal to manic to really manic to normal. But if your base condition is manic, then normal would feel depressed. So if you tell me you're bipolar, if you tell me you, you have that personality line and I say, how's your depression? And you say, you're never depressed you're never down, then it's a mislabel. Does that make sense? <sighs> yeah, maybe it makes sense. 
I'm trying not to cut myself. Part of the concentration issues here. So, health-wise, when somebody tells you they have one thing wrong, and then a week later they tell you they have something else wrong, all they're doing is telling you what the current ish is. They're not telling you their entire diagnosis. They're not telling you everything that's wrong. Okay, here's an example. They now know that if you have measles, it wipes out your immune system. It can cause serious, serious problems. You lose your immunity to things you had immunity to before. So if your friend says, oh, I have measles, Oh, I'm so sorry. Here's your sympathy. Okay. And six months later, your friend says, I have mumps. I thought you said you had measles. I had measles. They're, they're gone. But now I have to deal with the repercussions of having had measles. And now I have mumps. Well, why didn't you get immunized? Because I did get immunized. Well, then you obviously don't have mumps. Do you see how stupid that sounds? That's when I say something about my back arthritis and somebody says, I thought you had Ehlers-Danlos. Well, yeah, I do have Ehlers-Danlos. I'm having an episode of back arthritis right now. And actually what I'm having is an MS spell with minor back paralysis. The, there's a four inch span in my back that gets paralyzed, it turns out, which we didn't know two years ago. Okay, up until a couple of years ago, I thought that that was just arthritis, and it turns out it's an actual MS zone that paralyzes. Which is why I have so many problems getting up in and out of a chair, get, sitting down into a chair and standing up from a chair, but I'm just fine, mostly, standing up or sitting. Anyway, I'll say something about my arthritis, and you can really tell the quality of the person by the I thought you said you had. Don't do that. Just don't do that. I've got an acquaintance, somebody I like, know them on in, in meat space, not well, but have hung out with them a couple of times, who has been going through endometriosis. And there are a whole bunch of, oh, woe is me, my life sucks posts. And I want to get on and I want to say, oh, hey, it gets better, but it doesn't. And she's gone in for surgery a couple of times. And her post-pre-surgery are, I'll be so glad to get this behind me. And I want to go on and say, um, you need a different doctor because the doctor should be telling you that this will only alleviate symptoms for three to six months, maybe a couple of years. They're trying to buy you some time. That endometriosis will just keep spreading to the next section and the next section and the next section. And if you have a complete hysterectomy, it will then start looking for pieces of intestine to grab a hold of, an outer wall to grab a hold of, and it never stops. I had three rounds of endometriosis surgery when I was young. Three. I had a partial ablation. That's when they stick a balloon in and blow it up and then fry everything. It doesn't go away until menopause. I have cysts. They don't go away until menopause. I'm in menopause. I've been in menopause. I continue to be in menopause. I have not stopped being in menopause for over 10 years. Hi. Yeah. Anyway, I want to tell her that her doctor is giving her way too rosy of an outlook and this is just going to be part of her life. But she has the personality of somebody who might commit suicide when faced with, you're going to be in pain for the rest of your life. And you don't tell people that. Doctors don't tell people that. Because one in ten will get results. One in ten, it will go away. So the doctors are just hoping it'll go away for her. There are a lot of times when somebody posts online that I don't come in and say something. I have another friend person. I have a hard time with the word friend, okay? A friend is somebody that's a lot more intimate to me than most of the people I know. And then they turn around and call me friend, and I feel obliged to call them friend back. But I got like five friends. You know, the rest are acquaintances. They're close acquaintances, but they're acquaintances. Anyway, I have another person on Facebook 
who I know in real life, who I like, who got diagnosed with MS last year. And I wanted to go on and say, oh, hey, this, that, and the other thing. But I didn't because they have hope because the doctors like they're they're what they're communicating is take this medication your symptoms will get better and and it's all awesome and great and i'm not medically compliant on most of the things i have wrong with me because i have found that the medicines make shit worse that i would rather be in pain than stoned you know the MS medications, when you weigh the good and the bad, the to me the bad really, really outweighs. The risks of the of the, the medications really, really outweigh the slow steady. I gotta wash my hands. I'll be right back. And yes, I'm wearing the skirt. Because it's nine o'clock in the morning. Because I'm tired. Because I'm lazy. Anyway, so when she announced that she had MS, I, over a couple of years of her posting symptoms, I posted a couple of times, hey, have you considered MS? Hey, have your doctor rule out this? Have your doctor rule out that? Have them look into MS. Because that's what her symptoms were. If you have periods, MS is highly undiagnosed. It has a higher rate than the diagnosis is getting. If you wake up one morning and you have no nerve endings you can't feel this or this or this or any random place any random place you can't feel but everything works fine you just can't feel just the skin i can feel the muscles but i can't feel the skin that's what my shoulder's doing right now he goes to give me a, a light back rub and i'm like i can't feel your fingers so he starts massaging and i can feel the massage if you have that nerve shut off and it's not just for a couple hours it's for a month think ms if you have a limb that feels paralyzed and it's just not i mean you can use it but you got to think about it and you might drop stuff think ms if you have the shakes all the time if your body shakes get evaluated. Usually when I go in, they try to say it's Parkinson's or Huntington's and I don't meet the profiles for those at all. But yeah. Anytime you go into the doctor and it's the third time you've gone in and they can't figure out what's wrong, tell them to start looking for fucking zebras. It's as simple as that. Okay. Another person last night posted that they went into the hospital for chest pains or for chest tightness. And they'd taken an antacid, and yeah, my hair looks like shit. They'd taken an antacid, and they'd taken their inhaler, and they still had chest tightness, so they went in. And they posted a copy of their strip, the, the heart monitor strip. And I glanced at it, and I was like, oh, PACs. PACs are premature atrial um, contractions. Your heart's got an extra beat at the beginning. Choo -choo! It's hiccuping. Okay. Perfectly harmless. People have them without symptoms. Not causing the problem. Then, looking at it, there's an elevated ST wave. Okay, so then this person's talking about what the doctors have said, and the doctors have said they don't know exactly what's causing the tightness. Here's some anti-inflammatories. Go home and rest. When I had my heart attack, they tried that. Luckily, my husband was a paramedic and I had medical training. It's like, now can we run the strip again? Can we run the strip? Can we look at this? Can we evaluate this? Anyway, on this person's strip that they posted on Facebook is an elevated ST wave. It is diagnostic criteria for having had a heart attack at some minor cardiac incident at some point in the past. Okay, by the time you hit 50, 30% of people have this because 30% of people have had a minor heart attack and survived. 
That was when you pushed through hiking and it got really, really tight and then you were just wiped out afterwards. That's cardiac damage. So I thought about making a comment about that. Oh, hey, have them, elevate, have them evaluate that, that elevated ST wave, but this person would take it too much to heart and get way too upset and way too worried and there's no reason to be. There's no reason to be. It's something in the past. It's not what was causing the chest tightness that day. Anyway, this is me rambling. It's been 30 minutes. I did the pumpkins. Oh, ow, that's heavy. Okay, so this is going to go into the crock pot. And it's just going to get mushed up with some water as it needed. And it's just going to get cooked until it turns darker than this. So, I yeah, you saw how light it was. Until it's pumpkin butter, and there'll be some cinnamon thrown in, and there'll be some sugar thrown in, brown sugar thrown in, and it will, this entire thing, humph, will reduce down into, that's too much, into a quart jar, and I don't have a quart jar here. It'll reduce down into slightly less than this, okay? That entire jar, that bowl, will reduce down into about that much of a thick paste which I will then get some Glutino English muffins. Glutino brand gluten-free stuff is the holy grail. That's yummy. Anyway, I'll get some Glutino English muffins and eat it all up in like three days. The husband will eat it with a spoon. He'll eat it from the crock pot while it's cooking. Yeah. Anyway, I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.